If you spend a lot of time using Blender, you're probably used to staring at something like this. Boring grey objects with boring flat lighting. Not only is this really depressing to look at, but it can actually be quite difficult to work with sometimes. But what not a lot of people realize is that Blender's viewport is actually incredibly powerful. It has a lot of features that can make it look much better. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. The scene file that I'm using to make this demo was created for module two of my exterior masterclass course, which was just released yesterday. It adds four and a half hours of additional bonus content to the course and shows you the entire process that I followed to make this Spanish style Hacienda courtyard in Blender. Right now you can save 40% on this course and all of my other products over at Gumroad using the code FLASH. If you get the Masterclass bundle, you'll get this course and another course essentially for the price of one if you use that code. I'll leave a link in the description. So by default in Blender, you'll have a scene that looks something like this. Everything has this kind of same roughness, gray sort of material. There's no real uh, lighting going on here. I mean, we have kind of some shadow on one side and not on the other, but it's not really simulating proper lighting at all. Um, so if we go over to this little checkbox here, the drop down, we have viewport shading. One of the most important buttons probably in Blender is right here. This turns on world space lighting. So even when you're in solid view mode, you can turn this on. It doesn't look like anything's changed, but if we rotate the light, you can see that it actually simulates some fairly realistic lighting sources in the scene. This is great for figuring out where you might want to put an actual light source in the final render. And it's also a great way sometimes to just kind of give yourself some 3D separation so you can really see what the forms are going to look like in the final scene. So I'm going to turn that off for now. Now, I've got this set to single at the moment, which does exactly what it sounds like. It gives everything the same material and you can actually change the color of this material over here. I uh, don't know why you would want to do that. I always leave it. Sometimes I give it a little bit of a tint, but for the most part, I just leave it like this. There's random color, which does exactly what you would expect. It gives every single object its own unique color. Some of these you can see are the same color or they look like they are, but that's actually only because it's one object using an array. So I use this one constantly. It's a really great way when you have a very complex scene with lots of different parts just to be able to see actually what's part of one object and what's part of something else. Really, really easily to identify that. I, I love this mod, I use it all the time. There's another one here called Material. And what this basically does is it allows you to uh, give every object a color based on its material. So if I select this here and I go to the Material settings, I go down the bottom here to where we have Viewport Display, I can give this its own color. So everything with this material will get this yellow color. You can even change properties like how metallic it looks and its roughness. So this one's a really handy mode as well. Uh, the other ones, textured, things like that, I don't really use very often. Sometimes textured can be handy. It does what you'd expect. It just shows you textures in the scene. It doesn't always work. You can see it's not, it's showing the texture on these tiles here but it's not showing you the texture for some reason on these tiles. I don't know why that is. Maybe someone could tell me. Now, these are some of the most important settings, I think, for the viewport in Blender down here. The first one is back face culling. What that basically does is any face that is pointing the opposite direction to you disappears. So you can see that half of these branches, for instance, half these leaves disappear because they're facing we're looking at them from the underneath, basically. We have the X-ray mode, which is kind of like if you press Alt and Z and you can see through things. Well, we can do that in the viewport as well, but we can actually change how see-through things are. One thing I like to do sometimes, I actually render out like this. If you take it all the way down, you get this really cool kind of like line drawing effect. I think it looks quite good. You might not know this, but you can go to view, viewport render, and you can actually render out whatever's in the viewport. We'll talk about that later. So that's handy for that. So let's uh, turn, turn that back off. Now we have shadow. This is kind of like the lighting up here, but it will use the real light sources in the scene. So if I turn this on, I have a strong sun lamp, which is coming in from this direction. And you can see that it's actually showing us what the shadows are going to look like in the final render. We can turn the strength on that way up. 
if we want to see what the shadow is going to be like or really far down just to get an idea you can actually uh, change the direction as well so even though my light source is coming in like this if i wanted to see what it would look like from a different direction then we can do that as well i think this is really cool if you want to set up your lighting let's say your computer's not very fast or you've got a big scene and you can't preview the lighting in real time in rendered mode this can be a good way to figure out where you might want to put your light sources i'm going to turn that back off this one i love as well this is called cavity and if we turn this on you can see what this basically does is it highlights around the edges of the objects so if you're working on um any hard surface modeling this is a really great mode to use because you can see exactly where where the bevels and things are going to be and how they're going to look it's on screen mode at the moment it also has one called world which works better on larger objects or there's a combined mode which gives you both and it's basically just going to highlight all the edges and it's going to add some kind of fake uh, ambient occlusion shadows in there as well and we have settings for all these as well we can actually change the amount over these now we have this setting which is something i didn't even notice until a few months ago myself but we actually have depth of field in solid view mode so you can see here that these are kind of out of focus and we can have them out of focus in here as well in fact if i just select the camera so we can see this easier if i change the f-stop here you can see that we can have these go really out of focus right so i think that's a very cool thing to have in solid view mode it's something i didn't personally know about until recently and we have uh outline you might not even realize this but all the objects in blender have a line around them and you can turn that off turn that off or on or you can change the color on this as well if you would like that to be something that's going to stand out a little bit more that's your option uh specular lighting basically just adds a little bit of a highlight on flat surfaces makes things stand out a little bit better so what i quite often do is i'll use a cavity set to screen and sometimes i'll have a little bit of shadow this might slow your viewport down a little bit i'll sometimes have that on and i'll have an outline on as well although i won't have it set to that i'll have the outline usually on black and you can see like compared to what we had earlier on this is just it pops a little bit better and it makes it a little bit easier to see what we're doing now these aren't the only viewport settings we can also go over to the viewport overlays and that has a lot of options as well right so we have things like color opacity which we don't really need we have face orientation which will show you if you have any flip normals the back face culling that i was talking about this is what it's going to hide basically if you can see this side of the face the bottom side uh, that's something that it's nice to be able to identify we have wireframe mode as well this is another one i've had people ask me about how you do wireframes in blender you can actually just do them in the viewport so you can see all the nice topology and things here and if we go back to the settings for this you can change how many of the uh, viewports will actually appear the the viewport lines Right, so you can change the slider and I'll basically show you how dense the viewport mesh is going to be. And you can also change the opacity. So if you want to just a little bit visible, you can do that as well. Or you can just turn that off entirely. And it's also entirely possible to turn on and off pretty much anything else that appears in the scene. So if you have extra objects, like if we just add an empty uh, over here and you want to hide all the empties in the scene, you can hide extras you can hide origin points if you want those to disappear and bones and things like that uh, the floor right we have a line here that shows us the x and y we could turn these off too right and we could or we can turn on the uh the axes for the z if we want to turn that on i'm going to turn that back off though you could change the scale on the grid that's some another one that i didn't actually realize until recently we can actually alter the scale that we want you can turn the floor off entirely uh, we can turn this text off but you can also turn statistics on and this is a really handy one if you're working on large scenes if you turn statistics on and you select something that will tell you the makeup of that thing basically this object as you can see this is incredibly dense because each one of these tiles 
is individually modeled, like this is all real geometry. So we have a huge amount of, uh, of information going on in this scene, which is why it's running a little bit slow when I've got all these different things turned on as well. Uh, and the final one, we have this grid. Now it might look like nothing happens here, but that's for when you're in ortho mode. So if I go into the top view, we can turn the grid on and off when we're in orthographic mode as well. And you're looking at things without any perspective. So if we go back to the original tab that we were on, we have uh, a number of different options over here for these materials. Now these are all kind of the same. I don't ever really touch these, but you do have a little bit of variation over here. You can get rid of the shading entirely if you want, if just by changing this to flat. And once again, you can give this uh, random different colors or you can set a color of your own. Uh, you can get some really nice effects out of this actually if you wanted if you turned off the different lines and gizmos then you could render this out and get a pretty nice sort of effect and finally and probably most important when it comes to actually modeling things is matte caps matte caps are a really great way to view meshes in blender especially if you have something like a car model where you need to really worry about having tiny little imperfections and bumps and bad uh, topology because we have modes like this. This is one of the best ones when you use things like sculpting or when you're working on these sorts of models. If you have any little problems with the geometry, which it doesn't really look like I do here, they will stand out when you're in these sorts of modes. Um, we have ones like this, which are specifically designed to show you like the floor of a surface. So you can see that it looks a little bit warped here, and that's because these leaves are not perfectly straight. They are a little bit warped. We have this kind of cool cell shaded look, which is a bit cartoony. And uh, this one is really handy sometimes for renders. You can actually have the normal colors. So you can see the normals of your mesh in the viewport in real time. And you can actually render these out and do things with them sometimes. You can render out an object and make a kind of 3D by turning it into a normal map. So this is definitely worth playing around with. Um, the clay mode is really handy if you're into sculpting. But I like using lots of these different map caps for various different things. Like here's a good example. You can see there's some kind of weird shading on the topology over here. It's something I wouldn't have noticed with the normal lighting. But now you look at it here, you can see there's very obviously... A little problem over here on this wall so that in a nutshell guys is pretty much everything you need to know about the viewport shading make sure you check out the link in the description to pick up my exterior masterclass course if you want to see how i made this scene file it's 40 percent off at the moment in my flash sale as are all my other products you just need to use the code flash over at gumroad and you'll save 40 percent thanks for watching guys and i'll catch you in a few days with another video